All right, everybody. All right, Zay from Really Easy AI. And it is time, I think, to wrap this up. We're talking about how to really use Google Notebook LM Update Part 3. Let's jump into it. So um, we've learned quite a bit so far. We should be finishing up today with asking questions, working with answers, sharing notebooks, and some suggested use cases. Let's jump right into it. First and foremost, asking questions. Um, whenever you're in your notebook, uh, there's a couple of ways you can ask questions. The main way is with your sources. So real quick, let me show you. So when you're uh, asking questions, you'll notice down here in the question, the chat area, it shows the number of sources you're about to ask the questions of. If you deselect some sources, that number changes. You can see here now it's down to six sources, five sources in my case, right? So you can pick uh, which sources you want to ask questions from or ask questions from all the sources or anything in between. doesn't matter. Uh, so that's item number one. So for example, we might ask a question um, here, how do liquid foundation models different from GPT-based models? Sure, let's go for it. And then it goes on <coughs> and it looks through all the sources to come up with an answer. So that's what it's doing right now. It's actually using Gemini, going through all the sources and coming up with an answer. So we'll let it do that. Now, while it's doing that, there is another approach. Uh, in addition to asking questions from sources, you can ask questions from your notes. Now it's an either or. You can either ask questions from your sources or your notes, not both at the same time. So here you can see uh, we asked the question here, uh, how do liquid foundation models differ from GPT-based models? It gave us a nice answer with those lovely citations uh, and uh, really nice. All right, very cool. Now we'll get to what to do with these answers later on. This is a few things we can do here. But now let me illustrate that or compare that to doing uh, queries against your notes. So if I go back to the notebook now, and uh, I'm showing my notes here. If I notice right now, it, down here it says eight sources, right? But if I start clicking on notes, notice it changes to one note. So now you're about to ask questions of your notes. And so if you ask a question now, what is notebook, uh, or sorry, what is liquid AI? You can see it's going to go through the notes, and if that information is in the notes, it's going to pull that information out of the notes as appropriate, uh, as opposed to your sources. So at any given time, you'll always know what you're asking questions of by looking here. You can see here it actually says, so here's the answer, uh, what is Liquid AI? It's a spin-off, blah, blah, blah. Here's a breakdown. And it even has citations, but notice the citations aren't the same, right? So it's giving you, uh, I guess this is a note number, note number five in this case, maybe, note number eight. Citations can be a whole lot better, which, by the way, is a dead giveaway that you're asking questions of notes rather than sources, which usually is an accident, if we're being perfectly honest. But there you go. Um, so be aware of that. Uh, um, but that's uh, that gives you the answers that you need here. So notice, compare those citations with these citations, which come from the sources way different right way way different okay uh by the way if you want to just uh get rid of this uh stuff just click on to, to make your chat pop up and go away you see here where it says close chat click on close chat you can see your notes again i'm going to click on deselect all if you want to view your chat click on view chat it brings chat up close chat makes it go away very convenient so you can see everything and not have to bounce around all the time all right next item um, so asking non-related questions. So I get, I get this a lot. Uh, what happens if I ask a non-related question? That is to say, I've got all this information, but what happens, you know, if this is all based about liquid AI. What if I say, what is a penguin? Now we don't have anything on penguins in our sources or in our notes or anywhere. So you'll notice it says, look, the sources provided focus on liquid AI, a company that builds AI systems, and do not contain information about penguins. So what do you smoke it? So it's awesome that it does that. It doesn't, it, even though it's using Gemini under the hood, and Gemini definitely could answer that question, it doesn't answer the question unless the source gives it the information and then it can, you know, give you a reasonable answer. 
So that is a very, very, very cool thing. By the way, we call that <coughs> Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG. Opening and closing chat. I've already shown you how to do that. Uh, now, this is a big one. Chat history is not retained. I'm going to say it again. Chat history is not retained. Do you see all this beautiful chat history I have here as I'm scrolling through it? See all that? Tons of good chat history. Guess what happens when I hit the refresh button on my browser? It all goes away. You don't believe me? I'll go to view chat. There is nothing there. So what does that mean? That means you better make darn sure if you get an answer you like, you save it. Now, how do you do that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. If I ask, for example, what is liquid uh, AI again, and it goes through, it gives me an answer. Um, what I could do then is I could then take that and pin it as a note so that it keeps, you know, the answers I really want to keep around, I can just pin them. Now, again, that doesn't preclude me from just asking the question over again and getting an, an answer. That's fine. But once you get an answer you really, really dig on, and I, let's assume this is the best answer I've ever seen, then I want to save it to a note. So you see here, pin this message, or at least copy it, or do something with it to preserve it, because it will not be preserved otherwise. So I'm gonna click on save to note, which is my favorite thing to do, and then of course give it a name here. Uh, do save note, and I'll call this uh, what, uh, let's try that again, is liquid. AI, I, I tend to like to put the question that I asked as the title so that I know what it does. Uh, so that is how you'll preserve it. You'll either copy the text, use the copy button, or uh, save to note. All right. Uh, what else? Questioning sources and notes. Well, we did that. So moving on. Working with answers. Pretty straightforward. I've actually kind of already shown it to you. There's a lot of different pieces here. Uh, for example, when you get an answer, as we've already seen, uh, it has citations. And if you put your mouse over any number, it will show the exact source uh, material that it got it from verbatim. Then if you scroll down in any citation, or rather not scroll down, if you uh, click on any citation, it will actually take you verbatim to where it shows up to the source um, where it got that information from and highlight it for you. That is a killer feature. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing, uh, citations, quotes from your source document, click on it, we already did that. Copying the answer. Um, yeah, if for any given answer, you can copy the answer. So if you have an answer and you wanna copy that text and do something with it, you just click on copy and away it goes. Giving feedback, yes, you can do that as well. If you think it's not giving good feedback, you can say good response or bad response. Now, a lot of people wonder why you would do that. You do that so that Google can make this product better because I think this product's gonna stick around. So if it's giving you crappy answers, make sure to hit bad response, right? The thumbs down so that they can preserve that and figure out why it's giving you a bad response. Uh, if it's doing a good job, make sure to give a good response too, okay? Uh, it helps them uh, make this product better. I do it all the time. This is a good response. Yay. Okay, you see their feedback submitted successfully. Finally, uh, save to note, which we already saw earlier. You click on that, it saves it to a note, and then it preserves it. Now, the nice thing about save to note is not only does it preserve the text, but when you save to note, let me close the chat here real quick. Uh, and look at the uh, chat. It actually preserves the uh, it actually preserves the um, uh, the references to the sources with a number. Now, as I understand it, they're going to improve this so that the references get better uh, because these are a little funky. You see here, I got like a, a sixteen. What, what the hell is that? So the references aren't great, but it is trying its best to say, hey, here's where I got I came from. Uh, and they're going to continue to improve that, as I understand it. All right, now would be a good time to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to have you on the channel. Most people who watch my videos are not subscribed. Don't know why, it's free. Um, and if you really love my content, consider becoming a member. $1.99 a month gets you loyalty badges, emojis, discounted merchandise. Right now I only have one thing, a koozie, but I'm gonna get more. Uh, Artificial General Intelligence Level 2, $4.99 a month. Get you these other things, but most of them I don't tend to do. 
The main reason my level twos join is early access to my videos. I tend to queue my videos up weeks, sometimes months in advance. And uh, my level two members just like to get them as soon as I make them. They, they like binge watch my stuff. So there you go, because I'll binge create, so they'll binge watch. If you like AI news, consider joining one of my two news channels. One of them is youtube.com AI, uh, at AI News Fresh. That's where I read the news uh, every morning, usually somewhere between 3, 1 and 3 in the morning. I'll read it Central Time uh, and then make it available by 7 a.m. Central Time. Uh, and I just go through a whole bunch of curated articles. But if you don't dig on that and my voice annoys you or you just want a shorter summary, uh, based on Notebook LM, I actually take all my curated sources uh, and create a podcast from them using Notebook LM and make that available. That You can find that at youtube.com at Daily AI News Podcast. Pretty awesome. Okay, let's talk about sharing notebooks. Invariably, you're going to want to share your notebook. Uh, well, I got good news and bad news for you. Uh, first things first, you can share your notebook by opening a notebook and clicking on the share icon in the top right corner of your screen. You can grant either viewer or editor access to other people. So you can literally, you know, viewer access is what you normally give, but if you want someone else to be able to get in there and add, remove, and do stuff, uh, they need editor access. By the way, editor access also gives them the permissions to mess with the audio. Uh, here you can see a viewer has read-only access, an editor will be able to do all kinds of stuff. However, there are serious, serious sharing limitations you need to be aware of before it bites you in the butt. First and foremost, personal Gmail accounts can share a notebook with at most 50 other users with Gmail accounts and cannot share with Google Groups. Second, enterprise and EDU accounts, email at my company or email at EDU, um, can share a notebook with an unlimited number of individual users and Google Groups as long as they are within the same organization. Can't share outside their org, right? Uh, and by the way, uh, personal Gmail, you can't share with anybody who's not on Gmail. So keep that in mind. So major, major limitations. I'll show you that real quick, what that looks like. Uh, here I'm in my notebook. I'm looking at my notebook. If I click on the share button in the upper right, you can see here, I have to add people, unfortunately. So I've got to add people, and then, uh, you know, obviously I want to notify those people, and then I can email them. I know it has a copy link button here, and it does copy the link, but unless you add them, they'll never be able to load up the link. So they have to be added. They've restricted it on purpose that way. I'm not sure why it wasn't that way last time. Last time you could do a public link and anybody could get to it, but I guess it was abused. I don't know. Not sure why they did it, but that is the nature of that beast. So be careful. You're not going to be able to make a really awesome notebook and share it with everybody in the world. It's not going to happen today, unfortunately. All right, let's talk about use cases. Um, just some suggested use cases to kind of round out the uh, series here. Some things that you might want to think about as you're starting to use Notebook LM that I wanted to go through. First and foremost, uh, hands down, the best research tool I think I've come across in a long time. It makes it so I can grab chunks of information, dump them, and quickly get summaries about that information. Now, you might be saying, well, can't you do that, say, with um, ChatGPT or something else? Yeah, you absolutely can. But those are ephemeral, right? I do the chat, and then they're gone at that point, uh, unless I'm doing something with the API and I'm working with assistants, but we won't go there. These are not. These stick around. These are for me, and I can create up to 100 of these notebooks. So they'll be around so I can review them, go back through them, add, remove, and they evolve over time, unlike a chat which comes and goes. So awesome for research, incredible for research. Um, meeting or interview transcripts. Yes, very good for that too. If you're, if you're getting transcripts or meetings or interviews, you can take them, dump them in here, use them to review um, meetings or interviews or even call center type stuff uh, if you want. It's great for that. And finally, Help Center are an onboarding guide. Now that is an interesting take and one that I've also found to be kind of inter uh, useful inside certain places. Uh, it's really, really awesome for people to, to load up all your uh, onboarding material, put it into a notebook, and then let uh, new hires have access to it so they can ask questions about it. 
Now, m these days, most companies have enterprise chat, and uh, they've already done that, so they don't really need to do it in a notebook. But for smaller companies, like you know Jimmy Joe's Barbecue, who maybe doesn't have that luxury, they can load up all their employee stuff and make this available to their employees, uh, which really kind of streams the process so they can learn about stuff or read about stuff in their off time. So I think it's very useful for your small business, and maybe even your medium businesses, uh, not so much for your enterprises. And that, boys and girls, is that. We have finally come to the end of the updated uh, series on Notebook LM. Hands down, the main reason I did this was to show you the audio piece where it creates the podcast. That is absolutely a major game changer. But never lose sight of the fact, and don't lose sight of the fact, that this thing's really awesome uh, in its own right, even without that. That's just icing, uh, lots of really good icing on the cake. This thing is great all up for a variety of purposes. I have used it off and on since I first talked about it, but I can tell you now I literally use it every day uh, for my podcast channel that I do, and it is just incredible. I've only been using it for a few days straight on the new channel, but man, I tested it out before that, and it is just incredible. The things you can do with it, just asking questions, getting ready, uh, for, to talk about these topics is just amazing. So with that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the series. Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, or become a member. I'd really appreciate it. That Bugatti is just around the corner. I can feel it. This is Zane. I'll see you next time.